friends, I'm back after a long celebration break. India is all about celebrations. So first of all, let me wish you all a happy Eid, Gudi Padwa, uh, Ugadi, Ram Navmi, Easter and all that I might have missed off. While we celebrate these festivals, even our stock markets uh, celebrate in India. On contrary, right now, if we look at the global market, uh, then it looks a little stressed because of the war-like situation between Iran and Israel. And while we are discussing about stock markets, I would like to draw your attention to one of the an interesting keynote uh, that I witnessed uh, during CES 2024 was from Chair and CEO Adina Friedman from NASDAQ. Let's understand uh, what are the things that NASDAQ is doing, who is pioneering in technology and especially in AI. So today's video is on AI in NASDAQ. Now let's try to understand what is NASDAQ. So NASDAQ stands for National Association of Securities Dealers Automation Quotation quite long name. In short, it is the second largest stock exchange after New York Stock Exchange. Now let's try to compare New York Stock Exchange with uh, NASDAQ. New York Stock, stock Exchange has a market capitalization of $25 trillion, whereas NASDAQ stands at $23.7 trillion very marginal uh, gap when compared to other stock exchange which are in single digits. Wondering where does NSC and BSC stand? So we, uh, these two stock exchange stands at 4.5 trillion dollars uh, each. Now moving ahead, there is one more important point uh, to note between these two stock exchanges. First thing is uh, a New York Stock Exchange engages in floor trading as well as electronic trading and that's how their uh, market capitalization 25 is justified whereas uh, nasdaq is only involved in electronic trading since inception and they having a market capitalization of 23.7 is huge also there is one more reason uh, reason for them to be technologically advanced is because everything is electronic and their platform is being used by 130 stock exchanges across the world so they are actually sitting on massive amount of uh, data and that's where they have a very clear vision on uh, how to leverage AI and in fact they are pioneering in the area of financial institutes of using uh, artificial intelligence. So let's understand uh, what is the vision of Adina Friedman when it comes to AI and which are the areas which they want to tap. While I mentioned that let's see in which area they want to tap but actually the fact is they have already entered into this and massive advancement has already been done. I would like to cover some of the top three areas where they are heavily involved. Number one is analytics. It's quite clear that uh, NASDAQ is sitting on a huge volume of data of 130 exchanges and a diverse amount of data that makes it much more uh, easier for them uh, to leverage AI and draw some great potentials uh, from AI. So analytics is one area where they are drawing insights and intelligence uh, from this data and sharing it with their asset managers to make profits. Next one is their anti-financial crime solution. Don't be shocked if I tell you that there is almost $4 trillion worth of fraud that happens and only 1% of it gets detected. Now this is a huge gap which NASDAQ is trying to address using this, anti this solution. 
So how does this work? So they have uh, created an end-to-end -end, uh, fraud detection model which uh, works across uh, and identifies patterns and behaviors across 2500 banks. Remember fraudsters don't fraud in just one bank or fraudsters don't um, do a fraud in a single uh, way. So there are multiple ways in this in which they interact and across multiple banks. So their behaviors, their transactions are all the time uh, different than and less of a repetitive one. This is where artificial intelligence plays a major role where it is improvising its model with uh, more and more these kind of scenarios getting uh, exposed to and it's self-learning and improvising itself. Now uh, you couldn't imagine any other uh, financial institute uh, to actually replicate this model because of the unique position that NASDAQ is in because it manages uh, uh, the transactions across 130 exchanges as I said and on a daily basis there is huge volume that they are playing uh, around. So their ecosystem is altogether different and unique uh, in which they are playing. Another term that comes uh, here is something called as false positive. Now false positive is uh, you have detected a person as a fraudster but in reality uh, he or she is not. In that situation uh, that person has to go through a rigorous investigation that financial institutes uh, actually go, go ahead with. And it is a painful thing for any investor on one side and secondly it is painful even for financial uh, institutes because they have to be sure that it is not fraud and they have to undergo a cumbersome uh, investigation and at the end they might also lose uh, uh, business. So uh, to address this also this model has helped. Uh, so this model has actually tried uh, to identify such scenarios of false positive as well and with this learning they it has helped in reducing the false positive across banks uh, by 25 to 50 percent. So it's a win-win situation on one side we are uh, addressing the right uh, uh, or identifying fraudsters on the other hand we are not penalizing regular investors as well. Now third thing uh, that is uh, here is this kind of a data consortium is uh, actually helping uh, them build more stronger model day on day uh, basis. Now if we say uh, data consortium so it then immediately the question comes around what about data privacy or personal data privacy um, and the answer to it is uh, while working on these models uh, they don't need personal information what they need is the transactional details and um, other information uh, and some specific parameters which are which are required for these uh, models but uh, not personal information. So on one side this is uh, what is taken care the other side that is taken care is all this data is encrypted. So all the data that comes from other banks and other are encrypted uh, which only machines can decode. Hope uh, this makes it much clearer uh, and um, I think in future uh, other banks would also leverage uh, this. In fact, uh, recently I attended NASCOM talks uh, in Mumbai and um, I happened to uh, listen to one of the speakers from NSCIT, uh, National Stock Exchange uh, IT division and uh, something similar they have also implemented. Uh, in uh, NSC and um, they are also working on false positive. So one good thing what they are doing is basis this false positive uh, they are also adding this as a feedback loop to the model and model is improvising. So good to see some progress uh, with other exchanges as well on similar lines. Now let's look at what's the third one. Next is financial regulations. 
we all know technology follows product product follows business business follows regulations so first of all technology comes immediately a products are formed and it is shipped to market regulations have been always last in this entire uh, chain and same thing happened with ai as well the technology was so rapidly spread that all applications were made and a lot of uh, business is already in but now we are thinking about uh, the ai standard the responsible ai all the ethics around uh, it anyways coming back to our topic uh, with respect to nasdaq Nasdaq is playing a pivotal role in refining regulations. The reason for that is they are in a position to provide uh, more explainability in terms of these uh, models uh, that are created. So they are trying their way to convince uh, the regulatory authorities or address all their questions uh, by bringing in this element. The other thing is they are uh, Uh, getting exposed to multiple scenarios which they can quote um, uh, and uh, discuss with the regulators uh, on need basis as well and uh, on top of that all the risk elements which are there which they are uh, uh, i mean uh, witnessing even those can be surfaced and can be shared with regulators so that's how they are playing a pivotal role in defining regulations I just hope uh, more and more banks leverage these kinds of model so that uh, the fraud detection number does not just remain at one percent. I uh, hope you liked today's video. I have made a little comprehensive video, but I thought it would be necessary for you all to understand in depth about how does this entire complex things work. If you like my video please like share and subscribe and let me know if you have any questions in comment section with that me sarika says signing off for today and as always stay updated and be future ready